in Acts. So someone tell me about the book of Acts. Read. It is the fifth book of the New Testament. It is outlining the history of the apostle of the age of the So more than uh, prescriptive, it's descriptive. Someone tell me the difference between prescriptive and descriptive. Dr. Alexander, would you like to tell me what a prescription is? So some of the things that happen in the book of Acts aren't going to happen in the same way in our time and in our place for a lot of reasons. Uh, the book of Acts includes Paul's missionary journeys. He's seen it took so long for him to go to these different places and encourage these different groups of people. Now we can just we can do that from Facebook if we want to. I was communicating with Kevin. Who went to Guatemala? Kevin Martinez uh, was a guy that I kicked out of uh, Camp Memento in Guatemala. And we get to talk uh, every day. So I don't speak Spanish. He doesn't speak English. Uh, Justin Harrison isn't around. And so uh, so I Facebook Kevin, and then I'm talking to Kevin, and then I'm like, I don't know what that say. So then I Facebook uh, Luis, and I'm like, hey, Luis, what, what, did he, what did he just say? And Luis says, yeah, Google Translate is for the birds. If I had a chair here, I would throw it. Um, it is not as helpful as one might think. Okay, so, uh, oh, there's Ken. He just keeps his head around Zach. Hey, you could help me too. But you weren't there, so... I faced with Luis, and Luis said, this is what he said, and I'm like, okay, sweet, take a little bit of time, think about what I want to say, and I say, okay, Luis, how do I say this, and hopefully Luis, is, he's never led me astray, but hopefully he said the right thing, and then I send that to Kevin, and then Kevin sends it to me, so I'm just kind of, you know, laying in bed, doing business with some kids, and Guatemala, no big deal, so it's different, I don't have to take a missionary journey, though, I'll take a missionary journey to Guatemala and hang out with them and encourage them, but we still get to communicate uh, through the internet, the worldwide and stuff like that. So it's a different time. It's a description of what happened. That we can take things from that description and learn things about God and learn things about church and learn things about how we need to live as an apostle, as a 
follower of Christ. Um, but we need to know that. That's important for us to know as we're going through the book of Acts. Now, we went through the book of Acts a little bit in, uh, on Wednesday nights in the fall semester. And I, I'll take a little bit of time on, on each chapter and have, you know, what's the highlight of this chapter? And right now, I'm going to give you the highlight of the first five chapters. So good luck to me and y'all. So, uh, but what we're doing as a church, we're going to be going through this. And Neil picked out something in church. And what I'm talking about is, is a little bit different. He talked about Ananias and Sapphira and really our togetherness as a church and hiding something from God, lying to God. Okay, just the, the, the quick on his sermon, just don't lie to God. <laughs> First of all, he's probably no. I mean, I had a dad who was an attorney. I had a stepmom who was an attorney and a judge. So if I was five minutes late for curfew, they'd put me up on the stand, they questioned me, then they cross examined me, they'd sentence me, and I wouldn't see the light of day for two weeks, okay? That's what it was like in my household. You think they could tell if I was being honest or not? Yeah, they probably could. Do you think that I thought that I snowed them over more often than not? Yeah, I thought I did. Yeah, I did. And they saw it right through me. But even if I came up with the best story that might have been true, and if they felt graceful, which was rare, that they gave me just a little bit of grace, then I might be able to get away with something. You can't get away with that, my God. And it's crazy because Ananias and Sapphira were actually giving an offering, but they just held some back for themselves instead of their whole offering. Well, they didn't have to give the offering in the first place. Just don't lie to God. And if you haven't heard Neil's sermon, get it on the internet. What I want to be talking about is something that is a description of what happened, that is also something that we can internalize and apply to our lives today. Though it's not a prescription, it's not a word for word, this is how we need to do it. It doesn't need to come in this form necessarily. But what we need to know about God is that He is unstoppable. God is unstoppable. And you can learn that by reading several different parts of the Bible. You can learn that by reading the Bible as a whole. But as I was looking for one common theme in the first five books of Acts, that stood out to me. That death can't stop God. That distance can't stop God. That doubt can't stop God. That disability can't stop God. And that the disturbed, I'll get into that, it started with a D, so I had to make it work, um, cannot stop God. God cannot be stopped. And as I bring up Guatemala, I'll bring up another story. When I saw Alan uh, at the far corner of the room that one special night in Guatemala, he experienced an unstoppable God. As he was wrestling with God, whether to get up out of his chair, come to the front, cross over from death to life, and commit his life to Christ, and surrender to Christ. I've told you guys about that before, which is why I'm giving you the quick version of the story. But I saw him, you know, what's funny, we're talking about what, what's Rory thinking back there in the drum cage. No one is ever going to know. Rory probably doesn't even know. <laughs> but back there in the far corner of the room, I saw Alan struggling, and I knew exactly what he was struggling with. I could see his hands were sweating. He didn't know what to do. He was smiling. He was laughing. He was shaking. He couldn't get up of the, out of his chair. But he had to get up out of his chair. But he wasn't going to get out of his chair. He was thinking about what the people around him were thinking. And that was the nature of me and Kevin's interaction last night is, well, how do I follow Jesus when people make fun of me? When people question me? When people doubt me? When people are saying things that hurt my feelings? How can I continue to follow Jesus in the midst of that? And it's easy. Just compare what Jesus has to offer with what their words have to offer of his friends who are lost Alan made that comparison, finally, after what seemed like eight hours, but it was probably five minutes, he made the decision to get out of his chair, to disregard what the others were saying, and come to the front of the room and pray to receive Christ, and um, hopefully his life is changed. He doesn't have Facebook, so it's hard for me to get I gotta get first century church now. But, um, <laughs> but God is unstoppable. And if you've seen that in your life, raise your hand. If you've seen the unstoppableness of God, raise your hand. Okay, if you've seen that. And if you didn't raise your hand, that's okay. Uh, I'm 36, and I've seen God in unstoppable ways. And in the last three or four years, it is, I mean, so far away from what I knew in the years of my life. If you keep pursuing God, if you keep finding out, if you keep learning these things about God, and He will blow you away with His unstoppableness. 
first one is death cannot stop him. As I talked about uh, and read at the end of Luke, I'll, I'll continue reading. It says this, he opened their minds. So not even their natural thinking could stop God. Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures, and he told them, this is what was written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and, rep uh, sorry, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, which is the Holy Spirit. Um, stay in the city, you'll be clothed with power from on high. So death cannot stop says cut to the heart obliterates those things. Obliterates. 